In this video, we will discuss how to calculate the load on a column which is placed at the corner of a building by the approximate method. We have a two story building with 12 columns numbered from C1 to C12 and 19 beams numbered from B1 to B19, out of which B13 and B15 are secondary beams. We will be calculating the approximate axial load on column 1, which is connected by the beams B1 and B4. Before proceeding further, Let's have a look at the given data. The number of stories in the building is 2 and the floor height is 3 meters. The size of the primary beam is 230 into 300 mm and the size of the secondary beam is 230 into 230 mm. The size of the column is 230 into 300 mm. The external and the internal wall thickness is 230 mm. The soil bearing capacity is 150 kN per meter square and the height of the neck column is 1 meter. The neck column is nothing but the portion of the column from footing top up to the ground level. The height of the plinth beam above ground level is 600 mm and the thickness of the roof slab and the floor slab is 125 mm. According to the approximate method, the total load on the column would be equal to the load transport from the surrounding area ABCD plus the self-weight of the column. The dimensions of this area ABCD would cover half the length of its connected beams B1 and B4. The width of this area will be half of B1 which is 2 meter and its length will be half of B4 which is 2 meter as well. Hence the area of ABCD would be 2 meter into 2 meter which is 4 meter square. The first step in calculating the load is to determine the roof load, floor load, self weight of beams and the walls that influence this column. As we have already calculated the roof load, floor load, self weight of primary beams and the walls in one of our previous lectures the link of which you can find in the description box of this video. We can use those values in this problem. The total factored load on roof is 9.64 kN per meter square and the total factored load on floor is 10.69 kN per meter square. The factored self weight of primary beam is 2.587 kN per meter and the factored self weight of external wall is 18.63 kN per meter. Since column 1 lies at the corner of the building, we need to consider the self weight of parapet wall as well, which is thickness of parapet wall 0.23 meter into height of parapet, which is 1 meter into density of brick masonry, which is 20 kN per meter cube and the total will be 4.6 kN per meter. In the second step, we will calculate the load transport to column 1 from each floor. The length of the slab surrounding column 1 would be equal to half the length of B1, which is 2 meter and the width of the slab surrounding column 1 would be half the length of B4, which is 2 meter as well. Hence the area of the slab surrounding column 1 would be 2 meter into 2 meter, which is 4 meter square. The length of the primary beam surrounding column 1 would be half the length of B1 plus B4, which is 4 meter. The length of secondary beam surrounding column 1 is 0 and the wall length under primary beams is 4 meter. Whereas the wall length under secondary beams is 0 meter and the length of parapet wall is 4 meter. Now let's calculate the load transport from roof to first floor. Roof load in terms of kilonewton will be equal to total factored load on roof into area of roof surrounding column 1. Total factored load on roof is 9.64 kilonewton per meter square and the area of roof surrounding column 1 is 4 meter square. The total will be 38.56 kilonewton. The load due to primary beams will be equal to factored self weight of primary beams into length of primary beams. The load due to parapet wall will be equal to factored self weight of parapet walls into length of parapet walls. Factored self weight is 6.9 kN per meter and the length of parapet walls surrounding column 1 is 4 meter. The total will be 27.6 kN. Hence the total load from roofed first floor will be equal to Roof load which is calculated as 38.56 plus load due to primary beams which is 10.348 plus wall load which is 74.52 plus load due to parapet walls which is 27.6 and the total will be 151 kN. Now we need to calculate the load transport from first floor to the plinth. The floor load will be equal to total factored load on floor into area of floor surrounding column 1. Total factored load on floor is 10.69 and the area is 4 meter square. The total will be 42.76 kN. The load due to primary beams will be equal to factored self weight of primary beams into length of primary beams. 
factored cell weight of primary beams is 2.587 and the length of primary beams is 4 meter the total will be 10.348 kN the wall load resting on primary beams will be equal to factored cell weight of primary walls into length of primary walls factored cell weight of the walls resting on primary beams is 18.63 and the length of primary walls is 4 meter and the total will be 74.52 kN Hence, the total load from first floor to the plinth will be equal to floor load which is 42.76 plus load due to primary beams which is 10.348 plus wall load resting on primary beams which is 74.52 and the total will be 127.63 kN. Now, we need to calculate the load transferred between plinth beam and footing. This will include only the load due to the primary beams which is 10.348 kN. Total cell weight of column will be equal to area of cross section of column into height of column into density of RCC. Area of cross section is 0.23 into 0.3. Height of column is 7.6 meter and density of RCC is 25 kN per meter cube. The total will be 13.11 kN. The total load on column 1 will be equal to load transferred from roof to first floor which is 151 kN plus load transferred from first floor to plinth which is 127.63 plus load transferred between plinth beam and footing which is calculated as 13.11 and the total will be 302 kN. Since this calculation gives an approximate value, that's why we should take an incremented value as allowance for bending due to the effect of fixity. For interior columns, we should consider an increment of 0 to 10 percent, for side columns 11 to 15 percent and for corner columns 16 to 33 percent. As we are doing the load calculation for corner column, let's add 30 percent of extra load to this column. Finally, the total actual load on column 1 will be equal to 302 into 1.3 which will be 392.6 kN. So this was all about this lecture. If you want the excel sheet of this calculation, you can check out the link in the description box of this video.